Hi there everyone, it's Jaakko here. I made this scene in Blender actually and and I created all these materials in Substance Designer and I wanted to show you guys how I created the wood wood base here. So so this scene is actually uh, I wanted to use physically based materials because nowadays in Blender it's really easy to do and and you can get really cool uh, cool result with uh, with uh, when you're using uh, materials that are really uh, based on uh, the real world uh, sort of physical stuff which is yeah PBR that's that's what we are dealing with nowadays so all in this scene is actually created in Substance Designer the wood in the table and then that wood on the floor and then these uh, Scandinavian type uh, wooden plank uh, decoration panels whatever they are and yeah I, I'd like to show you the the floor uh, the floor wooden floor how I created that so uh, let's check it out so um, here I'm in a substance designer and um, and I have the material here and I'm still not like exactly super 100% finished with this so I might actually uh, because that's what I'm doing nowadays is that I sort of create these uh, substances here and I sort of return to them every now and then and improve on them and build on them and then because I'm getting better and better in this and I'm learning all the time so so yeah uh, that's one of the cool stuff about this is that you can really it's it's everything is so non-destructive in here so you can just get back in there and tweak and change it and make it better so yeah, um, uh, this is it. Uh, I'm actually, yeah, I'm sort of uh, happy with this. Um, you can see that um, the wooden planks, for example, the common mistake that uh, the new new uh, material artists do is that they make the wooden floor so that uh, the the wood grain is is continuous, so that the different planks are sharing the same sort of a wooden texture if you know what I mean that that for example this plank you can see that this these planks are actually individuals so that the in the, when the plank is changed to the other one uh, then that that texture is changed uh, so that uh, you can see that there's a cut here this doesn't flow to this side which should be real to the world because in the real world of course right you know what I mean so uh, that sort of stuff that I'm paying to paying attention these days and then Trying to be as subtle as I possibly can with uh, with uh, small details, like the scratches. The scratches might actually be a little bit too much in this, and they might be a little bit cheesy. I mean that um, they are just, just basically the scratch changer uh, here in the Substance Designer. I can show you that in a minute. But yeah, this is more or less the the result what I'm dealing, and I've been using this in a Blender since now and getting. Um, Okay, result there, yes. Um, so let's take a look at this graph. It's not too bad. It's it's uh, it's this is not like super optimized yet. I'm still finding ways to to get in there and minimize these nodes and trying to to find more effective ways to do stuff. But uh, yeah, let's dig in and see what what we have here. So this whole thing is actually based on this. Uh, one of the graph I created this wood pattern thing and I can actually just dig in this one and show you how I created this it's a simple monochrome black and white uh, uh, sort of a yeah texture if you call it is well it's procedural but yes so let's take a look so I created this um, node uh, this graph in here which I'm referencing here so cool cool stuff about Samsung Insider is that you can create um, create these um, uh, crafts and then you can reference them in another so you can save a lot of it, it's much more simpler I don't need to to go and create this every time I want to make uh, use this wood because I'm using this in, in a couple of scenes already and and it's really useful and handy to have uh, this kind of stuff lying around and there's actually a couple of cool tricks about this that I can also show you guys uh, so let's dive in so this is actually uh, what we are using for the base of our wooden floor so um, as you can see here is the graph and and you can see here with these branch spots I don't know what they're called this is would have this these places where the branches are coming off in the tree and then uh, they are left in, in, in they are shown in the wood sometimes but yeah so um, it's pretty simple we have um, we're starting here with anisotropic noise here and I'm just uh, getting this wood fibers uh, generator here and I'm using a 
transformation 2D to rotate it and and then um, I'm actually using directional warp and driving this warp with uh, the wood fiber stuff and getting this result and then blending it back I'm getting this and then uh, we have warp in here uh, which I'm driving with the proling noise zoom and uh, then I'm doing a little sharpening in here so this is sort of a we are starting to get the base of our uh, wood fiber base or what's that called and then you can see we have these details and that's also I'm just starting here with purring noise and and also doing this gradient linear thing and then I'm using a uh, transformer 2d to to sort of make it uh, tiling like this and then I'm using um, using this uh, purring noise to to drive this directional warp which gives us this psychedelic uh, funny looking thing and then uh, again doing transformation to this sort of squish it up a little bit to to behave more like uh, these these things in the wood and then then I'm using levels here to uh, just punch it up a little bit and, and using edge detect to, to 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 drive this so that we're getting uh, getting basically edges here and then we have a blend in here and and what this does is that uh, we're just get taking a uh, uniform white color and we are taking these edges here and um, we are uh, sort of uh, masking this with a basic uh, purling noise so that we are limiting we are, we are just masking basically so we don't get this everywhere we are just getting a little bit of that all right and then we have directional warp in here and this directional warp you can see it creates this woody kind of like wood uh, grain pattern thing and we're driving this with the same blend this will have a sort of a uh, put it in there so that it looks like it's really in the wood because it shares the same wood fiber structure if that makes any sense and then we have a direction of blurring here and and uh, yeah uh, so we're blurring it a little bit and yeah it looks like this and then we have these branch spots which I mentioned earlier and and this is again um, I'm just taking a this uh, shape generator here and using this bell pattern and and also getting some burning noise going on here and using directional warp to sort of uh, you know, change the shape a little bit and and then using um we are actually blending uh this this back in there so we are getting uh this sort of thing and then we're trying putting a splatter in here so we are getting a couple of them around and using directional warp uh, sorry a great uh, sorry gradient map in here so i'm uh, uh, using this in monochrome you can you can use gradient maps for black and white as well you have color mode in here and I don't know for some reason I'm using a color here now I could actually change it to grayscale to to make it more uh, yeah efficient because we are obviously de dealing with the grayscale stuff in here I don't know why this input doesn't change uh, I think we can just uh, drag it again maybe um, Ah, because yeah, actually, <laughs> it's a great scale conversion. Going just a little bit sleepy here. I'm just gonna delete that, so it should work. So we have directional warping here again. Um, we are driving this with the same purling noise to to change the uh, shape a little bit, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, this is sort of driving it uh, around a little bit. So we are. Uh, I'm not actually. Sure, I don't know why I did this. Um, I could probably manage without this, but uh, it's, it's there. Then we have directional um, warp again, and we are now using uh, this uh, result here. This is actually wood fibers one, which I'm using, and then I'm uh, rotating it here to match the, the direction of the wood. And then I'm uh, using driving this again, so we are getting uh, this. I could actually probably reference this from uh from here so uh but i actually i think i actually copied it from another graph so uh that's why i created another instance of this but yeah i could probably optimize this a little bit more so we are getting this result now and then uh, i'm using a uh, gradient map in here to to change it i think i, I don't don't remember why I did this. I think I was using a, this at a color at some point, so we, this doesn't actually do us anything. So I'm just gonna bypass that, optimize a little bit. So uh, yeah, where are we uh, we are here. So I'm just gonna go in here. We are doing actually a little bit of glow in here, and then 
after that uh, I'm using levels and um, I'm using another gradient map in here so that now we are sort of expanding this area and creating this surrounding area for this branch spot and then again directional warp in here which I'm now driving with this and yes and then we have a blend here so when we are taking this guy and we're taking this guy and we are blending them together sort of remember like uh, to, to make it look like this and then we have a blend in here and again about graphs uh, I want to show you this guy I want to show you guys this cool stuff so um, in Substance Designer if you want to uh, if you want to expose parameters if you want to take this let's say that I want to blend this but I don't want to sometimes I want to create wood without these uh, branch spots uh, I want to make just simple wood without them or sometimes maybe I want I need them so so what's really cool about this is that we can expose parameters here and as you can see that opacity we can't change the opacity here because now we have exposed this and with, what that means is that this uh, node which this graph which we have created has parameter slider which we can control so we jump back in here and now we have this result here we can see that we have this branch spots slider in here and I can uh, just slide it here and move it and now we have these branch things coming up in here and as you can see even the this doesn't flow to the other side it's um, a little bit proud of that <laughs> so um, yeah anyway um, I'm just gonna turn it off maybe this is because in the wooden floors you don't normally see those I don't know why uh, maybe the wood is uh, cut out from more of the center of that uh, wood trunk so that you don't get those oh, you not I'm not professional in this by any means maybe someone who is watching this can actually educate me about the uh, how to make wooden floors and and so on but yeah I'm just gonna leave it off so yes so this was anyway this is what we get from the wood pattern stuff this grayscale um, sort of a base texture what we can use to build up on and then use this as a base uh, as you can see it's much more cleaner now we have that as a separate graph so um, we can always edit this later of course or we can we could expose more parameters and make it more versatile tool for us but yeah I've I like this workflow that I'm making these sort of a uh, generators uh, which I'm reusing so anyways here we are in the in our wood floor and and then uh, what this is what I'm doing here so I'm getting this one here then I'm doing the planks and this is actually very simple I'm just using a tile generator here and and I played around with these values here number of uh, of tiles and and x and y and and just playing around with them and trying to make them as um, non-uniform as possible and as random uh, so that we get these little random details in here so that everything is not exactly uh, I could actually probably get in here and do do a little more adjustments in here so but anyway this is a good start for us and again when you in transformation draw edit and uh, then using a little bit of blur to sort of give just a little bit that of uh, uh, that of this softness in here uh, so that we, we don't get exactly uh, I'm actually again I'm not quite sure why did this um, uh, it doesn't seem to do much but well you can play with this I'm just gonna leave it around here it was uh, I think I, I was after this sort of a little bit of like a blurred edge in here so that we could get more uh, in a normal map maybe but uh, yes anyway let's move on by all means um, we have warp in here and then uh, this, what this does is it creates um, a little bit of a just a tiny little bit of a variation so that the planks are not exactly straight so they are like a little bit curved because again in when you're trying to make something realistic you should try to always mess it up a little bit so that it doesn't look exactly like they are just rectangles that someone has drawn in Photoshop or something like that so that they have a little bit of this organic feel and wooden floors definitely need organic feel so I'm always trying to to get in there and try to get that in there so then uh, yes we have um, another tile generator here and what I'm doing here now I'm actually just what I did was I just did this one and I copied it and and then gave it some um, variation here uh, you can see that you can create the variation for for uh, different uh, tiles in here I think that we can probably find a luminous variation and contrast is actually the setting what I used and I'm using these to 
drive a couple of things and I'm gonna get to the color stuff later but but first I'd like to show you this pixel processor thing and um, I'd like to try to explain it as best as I can because actually to be honest I really don't understand it even myself exactly how it is I I was a tutorial by Allegri about uh, using um, I think the guy was doing some really cool really advanced um, uh, a dirty uh, kind of a crunch crunch looking uh, wooden floor thing and then he showed me how to use this pixel processor thing and and this is really cool so what this does is that it allows us that trick that uh, that the, the all the it, sort of planks have different grain in them so, so that this plank has different grain than this one so that we get that proper looking uh, uh, effect the way the wood planks are unique to each other so that the neighboring planks don't share the same thing so how this works is that we are uh, we are giving it this value, this um, grayscale values from this from this guy in here, and then we are feeding this uh, wood grain pattern into the other one. So we have two inputs in here, and um, again I'm really sorry, I don't exactly understand how this works. It's shameful. I should uh, get into this. I should probably study this this, but but what we have in here, we have this variables here. We have this position variable in here, which I suppose. Um, refers to the position of the pixels I suppose and then we have this sample gray so we are defining this input image one and and so on and then we have this vector float which is uh, x coordinates so we are dealing with x coordinates I suppose and then we are using the multiplication and we are feeding a constant into here and look what happens when I'm changing this constant when I'm doing this is uh, we are now just sampling we are sort of um, sort of sampling from, uh, I suppose, from another area. So this allows us to, in practice, what this does is it allows us to uh, change that texture. If we, if we notice that we have sometimes, because it's a tiling texture, and sometimes we notice that some of the details are repeating next to each other, and that can look a little bit uh, funky. I'm trying to get us into that situation in here, if we can. So for example, you can see that now we have these two similar looking uh, details which are just happens to be next to each other and this doesn't really it might actually be a little bit funny looking so I'm just gonna sample another value in here I'm just gonna put another constant uh, value in here now we have completely another stuff going on and now we probably don't have uh, actually we don't have now details which are next to each other which are super obvious so actually this is a really fun, fun way for us to to, to get more uh, randomness, we can just try another values in here. It's really interesting, so we can just kind of see how this how this works. So so it um, it just sort of um, moves uh, the texture on the x axis and then taking our grayscale map into account. So uh, uh, sampling other values, I suppose. I don't know what I'm talking about here, so it's probably I just stop. But this stuff, if you want to get into that, uh, I'm going to link that into the description about uh, in Algorithmic's uh, really cool wood plank tutorial where uh, Algorithmic guy really well explained uh, how this works and he was really precise about it. So watch that. Don't watch this. Watch that. So here we are in the pixel processor stuff and we get this now. So we have these cool uh, planks which are now uh, probably uh, Aligned so that uh, every plank is unique, and and what I've done then is that I've taken these planks again, and I did ambient occlusion in here, and uh, and and then did some gradient map to to turn it into color values, and then using blend in here. So then again, I'm taking this gradient map and I'm sampling these values from our generator in here. This this wood plank generator here which we used earlier and I'm using the same one for the color values which I'm now mapping putting some some values in here just uh, blending them here so we are getting this sort of result and and then again HSL uh, hue saturation and lightness and I'm just uh, changing the values a little bit maybe reduce the saturation a little bit and then again I'm blending in some wood grain here because I was finding it a little dull so I wanted to add some more, more a sort of a dirt grain thing in here so again 
I'm trying to be as subtle as possible. I'm trying trying not to blow overblow anything and put too much stuff in there, too much detail in here because we don't want wooden floor to be too much detail. We don't want to to have some stuff which looks like look at me i'm a wooden floor people don't use textures like that people want to use them so that they work and look uh, authentic but don't mess around with the important stuff in the scenes so yeah that's something that i always just try to keep in mind so yes again i'm doing some on blending here so yeah this was the sort of a uh, uh, dirt what i wanted to add in here and again being trying to be as subtle as possible so that you don't do anything like this which would just be crazy and then uh, again, we are putting some scratches actually in here. I'm just uh, using do, using this crunch map in here and doing scratches generator and and then then again uh, using levels in here to flip it. So one little trick that I learned actually is that you can use levels to also invert stuff. So you can actually flip these guys around to just invert it. Basically anything you save yourself a node by doing that in this way. So often we need to use levels anyway and then it's one way to do it and yeah and then yeah i'm doing uh, another blend here I actually um, use another scratch generator here and maybe i use a little different scale and different just wanted to put some more variation in there and then i used a gradient map to transform it into to change it into color values and and here we are we have a uh, the scratch is actually here now showing up there again very subtle in here so that uh, we, we don't have any too much uh, data in, in the albedo map in here and then I've uh, also get take the scratches and I've added added them to the normal I'm actually gonna get back to the normal in the, in a minute and I actually noticed that um, uh, I think we don't uh, have the scratches probably showing in the in our, our roughness channel so we have the roughness here and roughness is looking pretty simple it's wood is pretty rough it's, it's not very glossy at all uh, so so I'd like to actually make the scratches uh, so that they appear white in this uh, roughness map because uh, I suppose that we have scratches and the scratches are gathering little dust and, and they are not very very <laughs> glossy they are even more rough than than this so let's do that I'm just gonna add another blend in here so I'm just gonna get in here and uh, put a blend in here and I'm probably gonna grab these scratches in here I'm just gonna drag this guy in here and we can see that now we have completely white so this is not wrong with take this blending mode and I'm gonna do divide which actually makes them appear per perfectly white and now pretty much white anyway and I think this is what we want more or less and now actually uh, the roughness has though so it's a little little upgrade in here and then we have our height and I decided not to put the scratches to the height because they are such a minor detail and I'm just wanting to use this height to define this blank a little bit more to give them a little bit more depth that, that sort of the, the, these these areas between the planks are sink in more so sometimes if we do super close up renders it's good, good to have this height map anyway for our use. Yeah, and uh, yes, and a little bit more about the roughness channel. What I've done here is actually I take it this crunch map in here and I'm actually putting using the same crunch to to as I showed you earlier, I'm just putting a little bit more color values in here so that it looks a little bit more interesting. But I'm also using this crunch map to give this this um, texture this little bit like um, it's a little dirt in there. Some people have walked over this wooden floor and they have created a little bit of like uh, maybe some dust in there or some kind of dirt in there which doesn't necessarily need to show up in albedo map but but the roughness, roughness map is really good because it allows us to be really creative and it allows us to to really get in there and and really drive some really cool details so this is one of the stuff i really love about metal roughness pbr workflow because it really uh, it has this roughness uh, roughness channel which is really sort of fun and easy to use that that we can just get in there and start to play with different values and and I found it that the sort of the idea what I have in this that that sort of that the, the planks are sort of worn off that people have walked over or something and they have become sort of shiny at some point but then uh, also I wanted this uh, shininess to respect these planks which are going so that you can you can see that for example here we have this uh, shiny area which ends 
at this plank and then this plank again is a little bit more rough in here so you have this these little details, this sort of sort of accuracy in the details is important in this stuff, and I'm I'm trying to to improve myself to get more get more realistic in this detail stuff. So so like that. So well, anyways, um, I think we are pretty much uh, talked talking now about the roughness. So uh, then the normal map is is nothing really special. This is just normal stuff what you would do normally. So uh, I'm just taking normally. Ha, <laughs> that's funny. So. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, taking these again, these wooden uh, planks, this so that we get these uh, crevices between the planks, and then I'm uh, using a uh, high to normal world units in here, and uh, I'm actually just uh, using these values, this uh, the service value, and then the height. I'm just trying to be again as subtle as possible in here, not to make them too much, and then again blending in some wood grain in here, wood pattern in here, and then putting the scratches in and that's it's very simple it's not very noisy which I don't want it to be and and in this case I noticed that actually if I put too much stuff in here it starts to look sort of not really good I noticed that these type of wooden floors are actually rather smooth they are not they don't have too much of a detail maybe they are sort of a process so that they don't just show up the detail of like the wood grain so uh, I noticed that trying to be again as subtle as possible is really good for us in this case. And again, nothing special here. We just have metallic, which is black. So this is it. It's it's not too bad. I mean, uh, some people in my YouTube videos have commented that oh my god, this looks like noodle soup. It's it's not nobody can make any sense of this kind of. I'm never gonna touch electric substance designer. It's it's way over my head, and I'm never gonna be able to figure out how to use nodes. But it's really easy. It's not a uh, if you can use Photoshop layers, if you can figure out how to use Photoshop layers properly, you can absolutely know no way around it. You can absolutely master nodes. Nodes are nothing really special. So, so these are just layers, basically. That's what they are. They are just uh, we are we are uh, just taking something and adding or removing from it and and processing it in the chain, just like putting up layers on top of each other except that with these nodes you can uh, be more efficient you can uh, be also more non-destructive because you can reuse the same message you can change uh, values here very easily so yeah um, so uh, this is it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, hope to see you soon I hope to make more videos soon I'm really glad to see you guys who subscribe so if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe uh, I would be really glad to to see you guys around so i uh, hope you enjoy substance designing and uh, this was yakko uh, see you soon and goodbye